Welcome to Business Revolution. Business Revolution is an idea sharing platform where experienced and budding entrepreneurs share the business tips, do's and don'ts, pros and cons that have built their businesses to where they are today. Today, we have Regina Nantege of Rina Beverage Solutions and Point of Touch Nutrition Services. Welcome, Regina. Thank you. So, how about you start off with your story? Where did this all begin? Um, for the Rina Beverages, I want to start by telling the story of watching my mom start this business. Um, for the first point, it was, it was, a, ch it was a church program. Mm. We went for a training on juice making just to empower the women at the church. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because they thought it's necessary that they have some income. So after this training, we were excited, wanted to try it out at home to make some juice. I remember I had a school term starting soon, so I was excited that I would take organic juice. So we brought fruits, do the normal juice blending like we usually do, but this time I preserved it and packed it oh. for long term use but the fresh juice. So for me, it was a big deal to carry fresh juice, concentrate, I could keep the whole term, as opposed to quencha, which is just artificial. Yeah. Yes. So after that, we started to do a lot of passion fruit concentrate because it was very nice for people. Mm. They liked the idea of not having to wake up and blend or make. It's the longest process. Yes. Huh. And you know, the original process is a sieve and, you know. <sighs> For yeah. so long. Yeah, so they would buy. Uh -huh. uh, by then, mom was still lecturing at Chambogo University. And she was an entrepreneur, lecture, entrepreneurship lecturer. Oh. And she says it was not right for her to keep sharing business skills without being a business <laughs> person so i think for her that was one of the encouragement practice what you preach yeah mm. so really starting a juice production is not very expensive you just need to buy a few fruits Fifty thousand is enough startup then from that we started to do the wine because we also taught how to do wine from that uh, church mm. entrepreneurship session we started to do the wine and then from the wine we started to do other health products. One of the motivations for the health products was my mother, she had menopause, the hot flashes, and she was using these hibiscus flowers to make wine. And she was complaining, oh, I have the hot flashes, telling a friend, a 50-year-old friend, about these hot flashes. So she goes like, but you can use hibiscus tea to help you with the hot flashes. It's like, I use it to make wine. <laughs> like, she didn't know about this. So she started to use it. And I remember even when I was still at school then, one of my teachers had a certain complication and hibiscus was recommended. So we started to do the hibiscus tea powder. Oh. Like people would tell you about benefits and you're motivated to do something out of it. And you already had the stock for the wine and you're used to working with it. Exactly. So it just kept sipping from one product to another. So it wasn't really a planned business venture mm -hmm. of let me set aside this money and do this. It was just one thing after the other. I think that was about the time I finished my high school. So the long vacation from the hibiscus tea, we started to do the hibiscus juice. I, I was the first production manager. Mm -hmm. I was given a title. I guess she wanted to support the business mind. <laughs> um, I found it very exciting because I was getting paid. And how old were you? I was 18. Hmm. Um, I was getting paid about 100,000. That was a lot of money wow. for Form 6 Workers. Hmm. Uh, so I remember I used to use some of it to go and volunteer at a nutrition place because I wanted to do nutrition in university. And then the rest of it I would try to buy myself a thing or two. Um, I'm going to still go back to the starting point for me, for my mother showing me this path of entrepreneurship. Because as a single mother, I think at the age of 18, she thought it's not time for her to hide the fact that she struggles to make the money. It was time to show me that you need to struggle too. Mm. So she would literally tell you, make juice and get paid so that you can buy your shoes. Or later on, help with the sales, get commission so that you can do this for yourself. So there was always that work kind of. Uh, she always told us to work and get this, work and get this, as opposed to my friends would, I need a phone, mommy gives for money for the phone. For mm. me it was, you want to buy a laptop, how much is it? How much sales do you need to make? You have to earn it. To make the commission to buy a laptop. Mm. I remember wanting 
um, an Apple laptop. I remember they had that was trending when I was running campus. So she says, what's the actual amount? Divide it and see how much you need to make from making the juice and selling it mm -hmm. to buy this laptop. And I remember calculating and I decided I didn't need an app. I could <laughs> use an, an ordinary laptop because I needed to sell about over 300 cartons of juice, of juice. 300 dozens. I, I gave up. But that's a useful <laughs> skill. Yeah. I wish all kids could understand that. Yeah. So actually, that you divide what you need mm. into exactly how many packets of juice and you know what it takes to sell one. Yeah. So you can plan. Mm. It was, it was, it was, for me that was the start of business. At f and then the fact that I did food and nutrition in high school made it exciting for me to be a production person because my only job was to make the juice, make sure it's hygienic, pack it well. The factory those days was a little not mm -hmm. so well, so there was a lot of heat because we were heating using charcoal stove. Then you're carrying heavy saucepans to pack juice when it's still hot because you have oh. to pack it hot to avoid contamination. So for me it was an experience. I don't know if she intended to teach me or she thought that was a cheap labor she had, <laughs> but it was a win-win situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so from the juice production, I think the juice production was when we really came out big um, because then there was no one really doing a lot of hibiscus juice and mm -hmm. people were starting to say I want healthy drinks as opposed to a soda. So we distributed a lot of hibiscus juice in 2014, 2015, 2016. Then we also took on the initiative to get a standards mark from UNBS. Mm. By then almost known. Ugandan product had a UNBS mark, apart from the big companies, Coca-Cola, mm. the local pro yeah, splash. splash, no one had a UNBS mark. I remember actually when we wanted to get the hibiscus juice standards mark, it was the first for that particular kind of product, known to soda, known to normal fruit imitated juices. Oh. So I think UNBS really nurtured us through the process and took us like they, they, they helped us more than if it was already a standard and we're here to get just another mm, standard. Because it was there first also. Yeah. Um, we got, I think getting the standard also opened up a lot of opportunities because you're like an example for the Ugandan producer that you can have a standard and these are the benefits. We thought we'd get a lot more from getting a standard like selling more, mm. thinking Ugandans would choose a product over the <laughs> others, but that is not the case in Uganda. No, no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> our market is ours alone. Very few appreciate it. They we, trust your brand, not the UNBS yes, certification. Yes, exactly. Mm. But at least UNBS helped us meet different people because they would always want to represent you as someone with a standards mark. Then mom had always been a member of You Will. Uganda mm. Women Entrepreneur. Oh, she was teaching entrepreneurship. Yes. So she would go for the trainings. But also one thing for me was learning about business was, yes, you have a product, it's needed, but you have to show it to the people so that they can take it. Mm. So she would literally attend the meetings more to sell to the business <laughs> women than to get the knowledge. That's your target audience. Yeah. You are. She had a few business skills as a business lecturer. So for her, her target was I should get to these conferences with these women who have money to buy my product. Mm. So she would carry me along. And you have a, st if it's a workshop, you have a table in the corner and you're I telling sell. people about the product. So that's how we made most of our marketing, workshop selling churches mm. and yeah then slowly by slowly people start picking interest in the product and ask you to deliver to a few supermarkets but the start was where is the workshop let's go and sell there <laughs> um then in my school time still i remember on my visitation days i hated it uh, that's when we still had only the passion fruit juice she would come you would call from the school booth saying, Mom, it's Vidi. She said, When I can't prepare a table for us to sell. <laughs> Business on the mind. Yes. Uh, I think I was lucky to not be a shy girl mm. or a girl who cares about what people think about me in school. So I didn't take it bad, but I think another person would really. So embarrassed, especially as a teenager. Uh, yes. Things. So she would make me secure a table every visiting day. 
to sell products. Mm. So she would literally come and she doesn't ask about your grades yet. She's asking, where is the table? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she trusted my grades, I hope so. So we would sell to teachers, to, to fellow students, and ideally the school I was in had people who would afford the product. Mm. So one thing I picked from that is you, when you start a business, you don't have to look out for very big marketing channels at the start. You can start with what you have. You always hit two birds with one Go visit your advice. child. <laughs> <laughs> Sell so some products. There, yeah. yeah, sometimes should offer juice to the staff room. <laughs> like, so that they Example, learn about it. Then they get used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So being a nutrition student, I remember in my first year, I think people thought I was not serious in school because I, I literally went to every lecture with a few products in my bag. I've already. <laughs> yes, like, and I would try to sell to my own nutrition lecturers. And I think that was very challenging because you're selling nutrition to a nutrition professor. <laughs> like you're telling them, you see, please buy this product because it's very nutritious and you have and to this give this reasons to your own lecturer. It was a bit hard, but some were really supportive. Mm. I remember at my own department, um, I would have to supply about 12 dozens of juice every two weeks. So there would be like six cartons every week consumed That's great. at my own department. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was great. So people knew and people sometimes ah. bought because of me, Regina's product. The teachers, everyone. So you would literally find the whole department is drinking green hibiscus juice, <laughs> and it was good for me because you knew there was money coming in. Yeah. And you just call home, but the butter man comes, drops the juice at campus, go on with your lectures. Maybe once in a while, give your classmates a few samples. They get excited and buy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, so mm. you have all this experience if you're so young. <laughs> yeah. You've been doing it since you were a teenager. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was a bit forcefully, but I started to realize that I built an experience other people didn't because I'm sure my classmates thought that this girl is ever, after the lecture, running out to try and sell a product, as in when will she ever get the right grades. But that experience with sharing people nutrition, because I was selling a nutrition product, I would even go to the university senate building sometimes and just randomly knock on offices. <laughs> I had some courage. So you're like, you're really broke. So you go with a few pieces. We had wine as well, and male lecturers like when you go knock, you're like, hi, I'm Regina, I have this product. I liked the fact that people would sometimes buy because of pity, I think. <laughs> Like, oh, you're a student, you're selling this, and... Oh, Bambi, let me buy some. <laughs> yes, and I think that made me feel like I have to start business when I'm still young. You get a lot of customers because <laughs> you're young. <laughs> like, people literally support you just to support this young girl. Mm. And I think when I hit maybe 30 plus, I won't get that same That's support. It's not there. Yes, because <laughs> people literally, oh, let me support them. They call a friend, see this young girl, support her. Right. Yeah, so that was my goal when I finished my nutrition and dietetics degree, I was saying I have to start business early when people still adore the little girl in business. <laughs> but these are the insights you're getting because of the on the ground experience. Yes. Wow. So now we've heard a bit about how Regina got into this business and how much she knows about nutrition. We've learned so many interesting things. Let's take a quick break. The greatest wealth is health and your health is your greatest investment. Boost your blood and immunity by nourishing your body with natural iron and vitamin C in Rena Hibiscus Juice. Maintain a healthy blood pressure with antioxidant-rich hibiscus tea. Improve your joint health with Okra Seed Coffee, rich in healthy oils. Nourish your body with vitamin E and phytochemicals from our hibiscus seed coffee and peach palm coffee to reduce accumulation of cholesterol in blood. Boost your hormone production with our hibiscus seed snacks, rich in zinc and calcium. Get better health with our natural nutritious beverages from Rena Beverages Solutions. Our products are consumed by both children and adults. Welcome back to Business Revolution. We are here with nutritionist Regina and she has two companies, one that makes the nutritious beverages and one that advises people about nutrition and diet. So let's go into some more questions about how you actually run this business. As a young person running a business like this, you're working in a family business and you're running your own business. 
How do you feel this is impacting the young people that you work with and you work for? The impact on the young people for me is mainly, first of all, because I still have so many of my close friends who know I started this business right out of campus and I'm still in touch with those who are still at campus so they see what I do and they're inspired to bring their ideas to action. If they have a business idea right after campus, they can actually do it. Because most adults whom I told I wanted to do a business right after campus before getting real employment and saving for business, which was their advice, told me it is not a wise decision wow. to start right so away. you were not encouraged at all? Yeah, I, I wasn't. Um, then later I think mom started to think I really wanted to do this and she started to support. So for, for for my graduation, instead of doing a party, we, we did a session where I was telling people about my new business. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I invited family and friends and I told them what my business would do. Like a lunch party. Yeah, <laughs> lunch party of sorts. So those who really wanted to support us were supported. That's lovely. Yeah. And like we said last time, and your people around you are your first customers. So I started with my initial customers being my family and their changes inspire others. And by the in business, you can have a business or even profession and your family member knows you do that, but they never recommend you mm. because they have never experienced it. So they have to trust you and yes. know you and know you actually know what you're talking about. Yeah, so sometimes we take it for granted. You know, mm. this is what I do. You know, I'm an engineer. Just recommend me. People have to see you work. So, um, what inspiration I give to young people uh, is mainly the fact that you can start your idea. But as a young person, you have to know that older people have experienced this before you. You're mm -hmm. not the first person to go through this business. So always consult. I think so many young people feel like when you have an idea, it's your idea. You don't want to share. But always share and inquire from the older people. Right. Uh, sometimes we, we have been brought up in this competition mindset of the person doing a similar business is competition. But there's so many customers for you to be competing with the person you look up to. If I look up to a certain nutritionist, I want mm. to go to them and share with them. I, I, I tell my lecturers who, who, practiced, who did private practice before about what I do and they advise me. Mm. Before I saw my first client, I went to a nutritionist whom I knew was doing private practice and I asked him how he handles his clients and he guided me. So sometimes I also had that problem at the start as a young person. I thought because I was doing a professional business, people like my mother who are business people, not scientists, <laughs> did not know what I wanted to do. Mm. So I used to literally walk out from her advice and try to get advice from fellow scientists. Oh. But sharing with her actually gives me a lot of insights. Because she runs the business. Yes. But I would always think she's not the right person to advise me. Mm? Sometimes it's hard when it's your own parent. Yeah, no, <laughs> but uh, in a business mindset, like you think, because you're doing a different business, you need advice from to see So always be open to different ideas from different people. If it's a training on public speaking, go for it. If it's a training on taxes, go for it. Like keep getting the ideas. Ditch what you think is not useful. Pick up what you want. Just say yes and absorb yes. and pass C. Like how you said the business club really helped you as mm. a nutritionist now. Yes. Mm. And also the other thing for young entrepreneurs is, again, people have done these things before. It's not always rocket science at the start. People have gone through these hardships. Tell them about your hardships. Mm. If when we were starting our arena production, we, we insisted on give, saying we are a sole company, we, we don't want external support from a university, we wouldn't have had some of the things we have now. Mm. Because we have nutrition information on our products, we have everything. But we only got it by saying, yes, we are a company, but we need support from another group of professional people. Who so, know something that you don't. Yes, so we went to them and they guided us. So mm. that pushes you a step ahead. Then the other thing I tell young, young, young entrepreneurs is to start with what you have. I. When we were starting the Rena business, we had the fruits, we could use our sigiri to make the juice, we made it and then kept progressing. When I started my nutrition business, I had my knowledge, 
very little experience with personal dietitian. Work. I had clinical practice, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how to manage a person for a long time. Because at the hospital, you see a patient that discharged. They're not your patients. You don't feel... Well, you have to keep following up and coaching yes, you along. Yes, exactly. So it's important for you to just keep learning. And also, it's important for you to know that every day is a learning point. Because the way I coach clients is not the way I, I manage clinical cases. When you're coaching, you have to be a role model. <laughs> Even when you're younger than the person, you have mm. to give them that image of, like, sort of adore me or yeah, you have learn to from look me. fit and healthy and you exactly. know. Exactly. So there's a lot to learn, but you have to just start with what you have. Mm. I had my speaking skill. I had my, my knowledge. So the speaking skill is what I used to get the customers. If I had a skill maybe in something else, I would start with that. So I used this, what I had. I had the skill, I started with the skill for speaking. So I would offer to give free health talks to companies. Mm. I would just go and speak and one person would turn out to be a customer like that. So use what you have to get what you want to get to. And even mm -hmm. now, as I make the strategies for RENA marketing and also for the nutrition company, I start with the knowledge I have. I tell myself since the asset is nutrition services that I have, that other people making nutrition products may not have a nutritionist, let's use that. So to pull our clients to us, that's the strategy I use. That's your unique selling point. Yes. So mm -hmm. for every RENA customer, I tell them, oh, by the way, in case you have any questions, I can offer you guidance on this. So that's our special thing. So just to round up, is there someone who you'd say inspires you? <laughs> I think I figured out it's my mother. <laughs> because uh, I think I, not very many people grow up with the opportunity to see someone do entrepreneurship. And then also, I feel she opened up as a mother, and it's a good thing. Most of our parents in the African setting don't necessarily let us know how they make their money. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Of course, she started showing me more up, up when I was old. I, I don't think I, would, I wanted to see that <laughs> when I was still in, in secondary that she was struggling that much. But I appreciate that she let me see what the hustle is. Mm. Most parents don't give their children that chance. And I get very excited when I hear my nieces and nephews say, Tell their mom, oh, mommy, I'm going to pay for you so that you sell a lot because my oh. so that you get money. Meaning they, <laughs> they know understand the cycle. Mm. Most of my age mates don't. And they never, okay, maybe now they know, but they never got a chance to know. So it's a big shock when real life hits yes. you. Yes, so they're always shocked about how hard business is. And for me, I'm like, oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> like used mm, to this. <laughs> yeah. So I know the hardships and I think that's the best mentorship I've gotten. So I, I did look up to her because she's really if I'm sure if she came here I should make you guys buy the products. <laughs> like right now she'd have already thrown in an advert about the product. <laughs> like we can be she's so aggressive. Too much. Sometimes it worries me. Too much? Is there such a thing <laughs> as an entrepreneur who is too aggressive? Yeah, like sometimes it worries me because if if you're like, for example, at an event, like usually if you tell her, Mom, my friend is getting married, are there customers? <laughs> <laughs> like, let me just go and no, enjoy I'm them. Sure you. <laughs> She's not being too aggressive. That's how all business people are. Okay. It's so amusing. She's to me. indeed a business person. So I think uh, like seeing her do that challenges me as a young person because she will come back you've been in the same selling point and mm. she has done more sales than you <laughs> <laughs> so you're thinking okay i should i should really work hard there's still something she's doing you're not yes, doing it's not right and then she sees an opportunity everywhere like she would try to talk about her product every single place my cousin was telling me they were in a conference last time and he was in shock um <laughs> They were talking about some other totally different things. And then she puts up her hand, talks about the, 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 the topic, and then says, for example, my product, which helps with this. <laughs> if I did, I'm like, you're making an you connection. Yes. And, and she sat down, and she still put up her hand again, and still made a contribution, and talked about the next product. <laughs> like, if you don't give me a chance to talk about my product, I'm going to talk about it in but my comments. You'll find a way. Yes. How can she miss that audience? Those are customers. Yes. 
So I think seeing her do that is just a reminder to me to really work hard. And also seeing her work that hard, knowing she brought us up as a single mom, makes me want to reach a point where I help the business grow and she doesn't have to hustle to that. as much as she has. So I think that's my biggest inspiration. <laughs> mm. It's a wonderful story. Yeah. Mm. We've learned so much. Mm. And of course, we're going to advertise your product on mm. our platform as well. It's been fantastic understanding more about nutrition and about what it's like to run a service business and a product business. I'm Natalie Bitaturi and this is The Business Revolution.